this topic is, is mostly had been covered a lot with the uh, type of rotary, the generations, and with the advertisement. Uh, I'm putting this lecture is more to be from a clinical perspective. So what's the tips and what's the strategy that you can use the uh, any rotary system? It's not only about the supply product, okay? But there is like a, a guidelines or a protocol that you can use with any system. And I want to clarify these points. I was uh, reading in the uh, chat box, someone is uh, saying, if someone haven't uh, used any rotary before, is this lecture will be uh, catchy with him? Okay, I, I will go from basic to advanced. So it will have some for every most of the audience, but it's more mainly for general practitioners. Now for the uh, endodontic innovations or the, the most advanced that happened to the endodontic uh, era was mostly two things. The magnification, all type of magnification with the microscope and the loops. And the second thing is the, is the material, which is the night eye and the metal allergy. So when we have a background, just a simple background, we're not go in all the background, but let's say with the, uh, starting with the, uh, the uh, points, sorry, the background, okay, of the night eye. When is the first time the night eye was discovered, okay, in dental, was in the 1960s, and that's with the ortho. For the endophile, okay, they already start to catch with the night eye or the naked titanium, okay, in 1993, where they have the first uh, start with the profile and with the uh, light speed, okay. This is the beginning where we have the innovation of the rotary file. Now, the, when they started that uh, rotary files, it's the same design from the perspective of the cutting tips. It's from D0 till D16. The only difference, okay, was the uh, design and the cross section and the taper. And this is where I want to focus more on the taper. Because the manufacturer, okay, they are selling the product and they just give the, their way or the recipe, okay, how to start the case going from blue to red to green. This is not the way as a physician or as a dentist, okay, you have learned to know, okay, the specification of each file. You want to know, okay, each file, how it's used. It's not only the manufacturer how to guide you, but also you want to know what this manufacturer have made for you. So the hand file, okay, what we have on the left side, okay, is 25, size 25. The taper, okay, for the standard hand file, okay, it's 0.02 taper. That mean, okay, the D0, okay, at this point, okay, it's 25. If you cut one millimeter, okay, or go one millimeter up, okay, it will increase 0.02. That means it will become 27. On the right side, okay, we have a rotary file, which is 25, okay, 06 taper. That means what? That the D0, okay, is 25. But when you go one millimeter up, okay, it will become more 0.06. That means it will become 31. So both files, okay, at the D0, it's the same, it's 25. The difference start, okay, when you go one millimeter up. This type, okay, of, of rotary file, we call it the uh, fixed, uh, tapering, okay? So the tapering, okay, from D0, okay, till D16, it's the same, okay, gradual. So each one, like going from one to two to three, it's all four, it's all six, it's all eight, it depends, okay? This is what you call a fixed taper. Does this is the only rotary system we have or this is the designs we have? No, okay? On the right side, we have the fixed. On the left side, we have one of the famous, okay, rotary system. It's the pro taper next. If you have the pro taper next, it's called the variable taper. Variable taper, that means what? That means, okay, each one millimeter or two millimeter, okay, of the same file, okay, it have a difference, okay, on the way or on the taper side. Let's take, for example, X1 from the pro taper next. If you look to the tip size, okay, or from the manufacturer, okay, brochures, okay, they are saying that the X1, okay, it's 1704. That means the D0 is 17, okay, and the taper is 04. That's true, but only for the first one millimeter, okay? 
the, after that, okay, if you look to the three millimeter, okay, of the same file of X1, okay, you'll find it's 5%. That means it's 05, okay? Then you have the six millimeter, it's six and a half. Now, the design of the pro taper, okay, why we have some system that have a variable taper? Because each one has its own function. X1, okay, is not a shaping, okay, or a finishing. It's a shaping that's shaped the middle of the tooth. When you have the axis and you have the flaring, okay, the X1, okay, works in the middle of the tooth or the middle of the root. When you look to the X1 in the middle, okay, you'll find at the nine millimeter of the X1, it has the highest taper at 7.5%. If you look to the X2, which is X2 should be the bigger than X1, it, you find it will be 7%. You'll find X3 is a smaller and you find X4 is smaller at the nine millimeter. X5 is smaller and smaller, which have the dynamic of the design because the X1, okay, it shaves the way of the other pieces, okay, or the other instruments, okay, sizes to go to the apex. So X2, okay, when it goes after the X1, it will not have any stress or any tension on the canal, okay, from the coronal to the middle. Only the tension or the shaping will start at the apex at the three and one millimeter, which will reduce the fatigue and the, and the tension on the file. These are the designs. Why we need to know the designs and why we need to know the, the taper, okay? The, the manufacturer, okay, they are, okay, uh, a people who have a design, they have innovations, but you are the end user, okay? You should also, from your, okay, knowledge, okay, understand how to use it. You don't only take whatever from the manufacturer and just go and do it with the patient, okay? You might use, okay, one file from uh, one system and you might use another file from another system. You don't only fix for one system for all the case, it's different. This will lead us to the minimum and the maximum size epical preparation. Is it fixed for all the cases? No. We might take some few minutes on this slide because if you have a vital case, it's completely different from a necrotic case. If you have a necrotic case, it's different from a necrotic case with the lesion. The lesion, it might go and resolve the epical area. Is there is a size for the epical preparation? Yes, there is a minimum size epical preparation. We have, it's at least size 30. Why size 30? Because the irrigation and the need of the irrigation, it's at least to be 30 epical preparation to reach to that area. But does that mean 30 is the minimum? That's the minimum, but it's not the maximum. If you have like this slide, we have the average of the patient age between 20 to 35. The average size, when we have the average size, that means they measure the epical area. The average size of a central incisor, it's not less than 50. So if you're going with the size like X3, okay, from Protaper pro Next, it's not enough because the size here is 50 and you have the size there, D0 is 30. So you need to understand each file. It's not like manufacturers say, use the blue or end by X3. You need to know what's the X3, what's the X4 and what's the X5 and how to finish and end. You need to use all the product to serve you in the cases. For example, okay, the lateral incisor, one of the dangerous teeth because we have the palato-distal curvature that goes to the palate. And most of the damage and most of the cases I do surgery on is this lateral because most of the clinician, okay, they are not respecting the anatomy, okay? The anatomy and following the anatomy, okay, of the uh, lateral. So they are straightening the canal. So there is still a bacteria, they're not cleaned. So it's not about the size of the preparation, but also to respect the anatomy. The minimum size, okay, if you have a straight or a curve is different. Do not go beyond 35, 40, okay, in a lateral. That's too high because you will, straighten the epical preparation and the epical area of the lateral. If you look to the canine, it's completely different. It's a big tooth, okay? If you are going with X3, it's too small. Even X5, sometimes you need to go higher sizes. If you go for the first premolar, okay? The first premolar, it's a very tiny two roots, okay? And they are prone to fracture in some cases. So you will not go with these cases with the O6 taper, okay? That means too much, okay, preparation. And they are very unique because we have 
the mesial concavities, and most of the fracture it might occur there. So you go at least or the max with the O4 taper in these cases. If you have an upper mole, you might go with the buccal roots, okay, with the O4 taper, but you will go with the palatal, okay, with the O6 taper. So you can verify or you can use many systems in one tooth. Same thing when we go for the lower incisal, incisal. It's a very tiny teeth. You will not go exceed O4 in these cases. The lower canine, you might go. If you go with the lower uh, molar, you might go with the uh, distal, okay, O6, but the mesobuccal and distal buccal, you might go with the O4. So it differs from each case. You are not fixing your brain to the manufacturer only, but you need to know what type or instrument you have to use. So what's the available system? There is many classification, okay, for the rotary, but I choose to use the simplest way or the logic way, okay, with this slide. We have three groups. Most of the cases or most of the rotary fall in these three groups. Group one is passive. What do you mean by passive? That means it's safe, okay? Radial landed when we have a file and we cut it from a cross section, then you can see it from an electron microscope with the uh, way how it looks like in the uh, shape on the group one. You can see it looks very safe when it touch or slide or land, okay, on the canal, okay, wall, it's not aggressive, it's not active, it's not a rake angle that it's active, so it's safe. What category of files, okay, or famous use, okay, brands, we have the profile, GT and GTX, Quantic, Guidance, K3, light speed, it's safe. It's less, okay, in the speed and the working, okay? So it's a good case or it's a good start, okay, for a beginner, okay? S uh, student also, they might go with the group one. It's not like uh, something that you go and you upgrade yourself. Some people, they still use it, okay? As long as you can do a good root canal treatment with any rotary file, that's the case, okay? Clean and shape, whatever system you have. Group two, okay, it's an act. And it's really aggressive because the way how is the cross section. So you can see it's sharp. What goes underneath it is the pro taper family, universal gold taper. Okay, uh, we have the race from FKJ, hero, we have the M2, the sequence. Now the vortex and the vortex blue is the uh, new generation from the profile of group one. So you have to know the difference. Twisted file is an older generation from the uh, the TF adaptive file. Now the K3 in group one, there is a new in the market that called K3XF. That K3XF and goes under the group of two. So I need to understand the point of the speed and how's the uh, cutting and cross section of these parts. Now group one and group two, they are okay, a continuous rotation. That means it goes 360 continuation with the gear reduction motor. Group three, okay, it has a special way of movement, okay, if you know the balance force technique of hand filing, it's the same way. So it has a motion that engage in the dentin, then release, go back, and engage again in the dentin till it complete the cycle. So some uh, systems, they have two motions or three motions. One of the famous is wave one, wave one gold, and reciproc. TF adaptive is one of the uh, brands that go under this category. So these are the most, or this is the general, or the, the, the way how it's looking. Maybe people will classify it as the uh, first generation, second generation, third generation, the M wire, the blue, the gold, whatever, okay? We are talking about cross section, whatever in the market or whatever in your office, only follow the guidelines that can help you to go with your cases in a simple way, okay? All of us, okay, have the endomotors. Could be, okay, used for group one and two. Could be only specifically for group three. So it's only a motor that goes with the reciprocation. But uh, as an advice, okay, go with the system that can have all the system work on. So to have the continuous rotation or have a reciprocation. Now for the speed and the torque, this is a recipe, okay, from the manufacturer. They will give you the speed they recommend and the torque. This is something you have to follow because they did experiments on these files. If you have like a confidence in yourself or your way you have to deal with your clinic, okay, you might increase 
the speed or the trees, but you have to be careful. Some manufacturer, okay, they tell you, okay, that the speed, okay, is like 600 or 700. By reducing you the speed, it doesn't make the, the, the file safer, especially with the group two, because the, the speed, okay, when you go and decrease it in, in an active, okay, file, it might engage in the dentin and it becomes prone to fracture. So it's not like reducing the speed, that means it becomes safer. You have to know what type of file you are dealing with. Many brands in the market. From this uh, slide, okay, all of them, okay, from group one and two, only two can fall in group one, which is the profile and the K3. The K3 exactly goes to the group two. All of the remaining goes to the group two, which is active cutting, okay, and it's active five. These will fall in the group three, okay, with one gold and reciproc and TF adapt. Now, we will be talk about the clinical strategy. Whatever system you have, whatever brand you have, this clinical strategy have to be, can, it has to be, okay, done with any rotary system. Starting with, first of all, the guidelines for the rotary file. These are the guidelines that you have to follow it with any rotary file. Don't force files. This is number one. If you have any tension, if file is not going down, stop. That means there is maybe a clogging on the rotary flutes, or there is maybe something that's stopping. So you need to go and shape again with the hand file. Don't force files. Don't overuse. If you have a severely curved case, okay, and you want to use it again, no, this is very dangerous, okay? Give the, the excuse for the file, okay? And if you are using the clinic with multi uh, operators, and that's only use using the clinic. So you have to be very careful. If you think, okay, the cases is, is you might use one time use, this is the recommendation, but sometimes from economical status for the clinic, this is uh, expensive, okay? So try to make your own file so you know how much stress and the other operator is the same thing. Try, don't try to bypass ledge with the rotary file. You need to gain back the axis or bypassing the ledge with the hand file. Till it becomes loose, then you, after that you go with the rotary file. Don't start and stop. So this is a good question. Sometimes people, should we start before we go in the canal or when we are in the canal? You should start before you go inside the canal with the rotary file. Now, if you are inside the canal, and you are afraid for any reason the sound of the file, don't stop the machine. Because if you stop the machine, the, the rotary, okay, will be clogged in the canal. If you start it again, it doesn't have a memory how much it had moved from the 360 degree. It will start again and it will continue 360 degree and it might separate. So you have to be careful. If it happened and you stop it, you might remove the, the, the head of the handpiece and then you might and screw it from the opposite side. Avoid cutting with the entire length. So some people, they are very confident. This is a very, a very easy case. I will go directly to the, uh, the, the proposal, okay, finishing. Let's say we are talking about the upper lateral incisor. Someone will say, okay, I will go with 3504. I will just go directly, okay, with the rotary file with no previous uh, initiated files. It's easy for that file to snap in that curvature, okay? And you might have the full rotary file uh, separated and you have, might have uh, fatigue, okay? So you have to be careful, okay? You don't want the file to cut the whole entire uh, length of the file with the attrition that will happen during the uh, preparation. Length control is critical. When you are using the hand file, using the tactile sensation and you are watching the proper stopper when you are shaping. When you're using the rotary, okay, you have the handpiece. So you're not really monitoring what's happening there. So one advice is just to make your cusp uh, at the same level, okay. You might reduce a little bit quarter of the working length because sometimes when we are working, we are might pushing, okay, the, the uh, rotary file and we might destroy the epical, uh, uh, the construction. Some of the uh, rotary systems, they might suck the file, okay? So they might destroy the epical area. So you have to be controlled, okay? Or very careful when you are doing the epical preparation, especially with the larger files. Avoid breakage takes practice. 
all of us. I'm talking about myself, okay? We break files. Everyone breaks files. Someone say to me, okay, I didn't break any file. Well, I'll say two things, okay? You're not saying the truth or you didn't work enough, okay? You have to, it, it can happen, okay? It's, it, it's happened, but how you manage it and how, what's the shame thing is that how to, to minimize or how to avoid in the future, but this takes practice, okay? All system has its own way of learning care. So I have to uh, try and have to uh, learn it outside the patient. You might take extracted teeth, whatever. It's not a shame. Have all of us, okay, is, is a, a new learner, okay? There is many systems that comes out in the market. You want to see how much this system is engaging with the canal. Let's go with three clinical strategies. It's only three, okay? If you did all of these three, I can guarantee with all of the evidence base that you will not have any problem with any rotary file you'll go with. Clinical strategy number one, the axis. We have many debate about the axis. Small axis, conservative axis, truss or the ninja axis. Because what? Because they are looking to the strength of the, of the tooth. To do an axis, this is how it should be looking like an axis. You need to use the magnification. I will not look with a small hole that you made and you want me to look through the microscope or the loops, okay? I need to look through the whole thing. One canal if I miss or there is a tissue I didn't see, it will fail the case because it's a bacteria. In this case, okay, you can see how many canals. There is five, okay? Mesobuckle, mid-buckle, okay, and mesolingual. And you have this to buckle and this to lingual. If I have a limited axis or a conservative axis, you need to see it. This is an ideal, okay, axis because you have the walls. This is a crown after it's removed, okay? You have a thickness of two to three millimeter of dentin all around. The thickness and the strength of this tooth is more than enough. The problem is with you when we have a crown. Now, the ideal is to remove any crown if you're going to do a retreatment or to go through it. Unless, if you know the prosthodontist or it's a vital tooth that happened a week or two, uh, or two weeks ago, but if you're talking about three, to four years, okay, and that patient, okay, comes to you, okay, some people are say, okay, they will go through the crown. If you go through the crown, especially if it's a vital tooth, there is no post, nothing, okay, so you are drilling through the core. So how much of the dentin that holds that crown? There is nothing. Second thing you want to see from the x-ray, some people say, I can see the decay, whatever, the cracking, you cannot see it unless if you remove that crown. Although if you go through the crown, you might crack the porcelain, okay? You have to tell the patient how is the procedure, but even though if I'll go like in this case, I need to make it an axis, a full axis. I will not make it conservative because my friend, the prosthodontist, to be happy because also I need to see the canals. I need to have a success. But what's the evidence that we have, okay, that you should remove, okay, the restorations before you go and dig in the canals? This is a very good study by Abbott from Australia which he did, okay, he has a 245 case of, uh, of, of going to remove the restriction before and after. So he make a detection before the removing the restriction and this restriction was fillings and crumbs. He detected, okay, in 19% of the 245 case cares. After he removed the restriction from these teeth, okay, he found 86% underneath these fillings and crowns. So this is a very striking for every one of us, okay? We should remove the filling completely and the crowns before to finish or to go inside the canals because these are bacteria. And this is can cause the failure. Cracks, also it might happen, but if it's a crown or for a margin breakdown, maybe during the removal of the crown, it might happen. But for a decay, it will not occur, okay, unless if it's there before. So it's a, a reason for the failure. So if you go through the crown and there is a decay that you didn't see it, okay, it will fail again because the bacteria and the source and the leakage is still there. So this is one of the things that you should put in your mind. Crown and restoration should be removed, okay, before you go through the axis. Second thing, okay, people say, okay, if you made the axis smaller, it will have much more strength on the, uh, on, the, on the tooth, okay, from the loading. This is a nice study by Corsentino, okay, from Italy, which he made it in a, in a very logic way. He took 
a control, which is the sound tooth. And he made three types of axis, which is the traditional, okay, the one I show you. And there is a conservative, like in this slide number D, okay, uh, letter D here. And he made the small axis, which they call it the terrace, or they call it the ninja axis, okay? The ninja axis is only a small axis that you drill in the middle and you try to find your way for the canal. The terrace, okay, is okay. They're drilling from the top and they go and find each canal from the way how they look like. And he made a test. This is from the first one, the A, D, and G. Then he opened a mesial, okay, and the same of the uh, group A, and then he opened the same thing for group D, and he opened the mesial for the group G. Then he tested again, and he go again with MOD. The striking thing about this study, okay, that and the terrace or the ninja, it didn't make any difference. It didn't make any difference in the way how is the loading. The one who has the high loading is the one who doesn't have any access, but the one who has the three of them, okay, is the same loading. There is no significant difference. The big striking difference, if you have a mesial or distal, marginal, okay, breakdown. So if you have a, an MO or MOD, that's the weak point that you have. So in a case like that, you need to put a full crown coverage or you might go with inlay or only. So if you say to me for a tooth, okay, uh, number C, okay, if you finish the root canal, what's your recommendation? I said, after the root canal, you need to go and do a crown. That's a recommendation. So it's not only about the axis itself or it's about the type of the axis. All the axis, the one which affect the axis is the, if you have a mesial or a distal marginal breakdown. The central axis doesn't make any difference if it's a small or conservative. So make it wide enough for you to see the canals and to dig inside the canals. The axis, okay, one of the recommendations is to go with the diamond burrs. Some people go with a carbide. Carbide can make a crack in the dentin, make a craze line, okay? The sharpness and the cracking, okay, of this one. Diamond burr, okay, with the round, and then you might go with the safe end, okay, diamond burr. But don't touch the floor, okay, of the of the pulp, okay, with the bird. You need to go with the ultrasonics tips or ultrasonics diamond. These are the best. Every endo have many of these in its clinic, okay. This is a must. This is our secret to find everything, okay. The the mist canals, the calcification. This is the biggest tool that we are having. One of the biggest advantage. This is the strategy number one. So the axis and how you go with it, you go with the most as that you can see. Now the strategy number two is the flaring. You need to flare this area where we have the dentine bridge. You can see the file and the stress on the file. You need to make this file goes straight. You know, you need to reduce the stress on the file from that dentine bridge. But also I need to keep that area, not too much Okay, preparation, because that area, what we call pre-cervical dentin, we'll talk about it, that it's very critical for us. How we can make this line, okay, a uh, straight line. We can go with the uh, gate skeleton, okay, but to go, don't go with a bigger size than more than three, okay? If you go with a four and five, then you are taking more from the pre-cervical dentin. Or you might go with some pieces from the, like, uh, provide from the Dent Supply Sirona, from the Crotepa Universal is the SX, and some other manufacturer, okay, from the orifice opener. Now, the, the, the importance of the pre-cervical dentin, this is the most susceptible to fracture from many studies. So most of the fracture and cracks happen in that area. So we want to be careful when we prepare these four millimeter up and down from the cement to enamel junction and the cervical line. These are the area where we have the uh, furrow effect that we want to preserve when we do the preparation. So we want to be very controlled. So the more important, okay, is the pre-cervical dentin than the diameter of the axis. So this is the second or the clinical strategy number two. Now the clinical strategy number three, okay, is completely the glide path. The glide path at that point is size 10. You need size 10 to go to the work length and to be loose, okay? When you say loose, that means it's easy to go inside. So if I have this video, 
you can see the size 10. But there is some still resistance. Still there is a resistance to go to the working length. So we need to make it lose, 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 and you might go. If you want the, the, the best thing, okay, to be very safe to go after size 10 to 15 as a minimum, okay, before any rotary system, then you can go and start with any system and you are not afraid from any fracture or separation because this is the highest that you can go with size 20. If it's loose, that's fine. But even though size 10 is the minimum, okay, to go and it should be super loose. It can help you also if you are using the path pipes. The path pipes, okay, they are one of the good brands from the Din Supply Sirona. The way how it's designed, it's an O2 taper. So it's like a hand file in a rotary system with a night jump. The design and the diameter, this is what makes it very special. If you look to the purple one, I have to say the purple because it's not size 10. This is size 13, the D0, okay, with the O2 taper. The yellow one, okay, it's size 16 O2 taper, and it's a fixed taper, it's not a variable taper. The, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the white one. The yellow one, it's 19 O2 taper. One of the bigger issue, or biggest issue that we have in the, in the hand files, that we have size six, eight, and 10. Then after that, we have a big jump from 10 to 15, okay? So that's why when you have a loose 10 and you want to go 15, okay, you find there is a struggling. This file, okay, 1302, okay, it could be a very beneficial, okay, rotary file, okay, that can help you, okay, to jump to size 30 or 15 easily. Same thing for the other piece, okay, 1602, and then the 1902. These three files, okay, if you have it, with the other uh, clinical strategy, you can work with any system okay, you want in your office because it will make your life easier. All the glide path, all the access is finished. You might go with something called the ProGlider, which is can equal to the three of them. It's uh, 1602, but it's, it's, it's a variable table. The first three to four millimeter, it's O2. But after that, it will increase in the taper. So it works in the middle and the apical preparation. These are the, uh, the tips and the strategies, okay, that you can work with any system that you have. I might provide some of the uh, Dent Supply Sirona products, but one of the good systems that you have a difficulty in cases, we might use the True Anatomy, okay? True Anatomy is one of their new innovations. This system, okay, they made it in a combination of the metallurgy and the heat treatment, and they made it as a conservative as they uh, made from the tapering and from all of the research I provide for you in the previous slides. Now, this system, okay, can be used for any case. No, it's really used with the hard and difficult and very curved cases. If you have a case that has a wide canal, okay, or it's a, it's a large case or it's an easy case, you can use whatever you have. But when you have a difficulty case with a curvature and a very calcified canals, this is a good system. Really, it's a good system. What's the component of this system? It has a five unique design, which they have an orifice opener and they have a glider, and then they have the finisher, which they have three sizes. They have three, the, the uh, 20 and 25, and uh, it's not really 25, it's 26 and 36. I will show you the design and the numbering. What are the features of this system? That the wire is smaller. Usually for most of the system, the wire, okay, uh, that the, the width okay, of the wire is 1.1 millimeter. In this system, it's eight millimeter. The heat treatment, they combined, okay, with the blue and the gold, okay, so they made a new uh, treatment for the flexibility of the file. Now, the interesting part, it has a shorter handle. The normal handle is 11 millimeter. What are we talking about? The handle is this one. So it has a 9.5 millimeter of the handle. This handle, okay, what can help you with is like you have a limited mouth opening, so it can be used. Or sometimes with the pedo patients, whatever the case, but it can help you, okay, to have a more control on the file. So it's very conservative and the way how it goes, it might control the file much better. The preparation or the design of the preparation, you go to the, the, the normal, okay, or the constant tapering preparation that we have, it goes all the way from up to down, okay, in a fixed taper. The true anatomy, the way how it designed look like, it's conservative in the coronal part, which we have, or we talk about the preservative or the uh, pre-cervical dentin. 
the apical preparation, it's with the amount that we need for, if you need bigger size than the 36, then you go with another system, okay? You will not go with the less than 20, okay? We need it to be at least, okay, 30, okay, to finish and to make the irrigation goes to the apical preparation. Now let's go in the specification of the of the of the true anatomy design. We have the orifice modifier. The size of the orifice modifier it's 2008. That means 20 that is zero, okay? And the tapering is 08. And it's a fixed taper. That means every one millimeter, okay? And it's only have a seven millimeter active part. If you look to the cross section, okay, it's centered. Okay, when you say parallelogram, that means it goes to the center. It doesn't go and touch the walls in a motion that like a snake motion like the pro taper next, okay? The glider is 1702 taper, but it's a regressive taper. That means what? That means it's the like first three, four millimeter, okay? It's uh, 02, okay, then after that goes to 04 and you'll show, see how the progression will look like. Uh, the active part is 16 to 18 millimeter. It has a central, okay, parallelogram. So also it's fixed to the canal. The finisher, okay, that they shape the apical area, we have three sizes, small, prime, and medium. The small, it's 2004. The prime, okay, it's 26, 2604. The medium, it has a very special way of, of measurement. It's 3603. So the tapering, okay, it's less. So they are more working on the apical preparation more than damaging the, uh, the diameter or the taper. It has a regressive taper and it has off-center parallelogram. If you look to the cross section, okay, it has two pointy parts, okay, that will touch the wall and goes touch the other wall. So it's safer in the way how it goes. The same way of the design of the pro taper next. The active part, it's 16 millimeter. When we have the, uh, the, the design of how is the, the progression of the, uh, of, the, of the tapering, okay? You can see how smooth it goes from the D0, okay? Till the active part. It always goes from 20 to 80, 17 to 80. To, so it's the same way. You wanna have uh, an orifice modifier that widened the whole orifice from the beginning. And then after that, you have a loose file in the second glider and the prime. When you look to the finishers, okay, or the shapers, even though, okay, the progression of the taper, it looks in the same way from 20 to 53, 73 for the small, so, and goes from the prime to the medium size. Now, what's the, the, uh, the, the fixing, or it's the, the, uh, the uh, measurement that you will need to use with these files? The speed should be with 500 for all the files. The torque should be 1.5 for all the instruments. One of the good product is the uh, Xmart IQ from the Dent Supply. The only thing it's very expensive, they should look for the price, especially nowadays the economic, but it's a very nice tool. This software, okay, you can download it from the uh, uh, Apple Store or from the, the I think yeah, it's only Apple Store. And I will show you the video, okay, how is this system? It's only have the motor and you can connect it with the, or pair it with the Bluetooth, okay, with the, with your iPad with the software and install on it. So that software, okay, you might use it. Inside that software, most of whatever inside that software is uh, the, uh, the, the patient education and you can put all the system that you look like. I'll show this video for you and you can see what's the feature you have from the Dent Supply Sirona of the Smart IQ.
So if you want to try it, you can download the, the software okay, on your iPad and you can check with it. It's a very nice system. You can pair it and you can see all the uh, guidelines. Now, most of the time when I do with the Dent Supply Serona, the, uh, most of their uh, workshops, okay, there should be like a hands-on training. So when I show you okay, a system, you, you need to see it. So this is a demo, okay, on a, on a plastic teeth. Uh, how's the true anatomy and the sequence and how's the shaping? Also with the true anatomy, okay, there is the uh, irrigation needle, special irrigation needle that comes with it. Okay, I'll show you how it works in, in a different slide and how's the way how it can deliver, okay, the solution. So this is a demo, okay, and this is the tooth, okay, where we started with the size 10. Size 10 is like, this is the start, okay, negotiating the canal, and try to see the patency of the canal. We can know the difficulty of the canal. This is the irrigation needle, okay, that comes with the uh, true anatomy. And it's almost like a length of 23 and it's side vented. And it's a one times so that can be used, okay, and it's kind of be appropriate for all of their prime and medium size. So we started with the uh, orifice wider, okay, or, or wider, okay, so we can flare and you can see the amount of the uh, bridge of the dentin that had been removed. It's not aggressive, okay, but it gives us an access that can give to the next file will go in size 10, okay, and even for the irrigation, you can see now the depth of the irrigation can go mostly to the middle of the tooth. The side of the, the needle, it's uh, equal to size 30 gauge of the, uh, of the irrigation. We can see now with the uh, size 10 to verify, okay, the epical constriction and you want to see how the patency and the glide path, see how the difficulty, so there is some struggling to go to the epical area. And the same thing for the other count. So in this case, we need to go with the, uh, the glider, okay, that we have in this system. Uh, the thing thing about the uh, either the uh, uh, the orifice opener or the glider, okay, the motion, okay, if you can look to it, it's different from the pro taper next or other. So okay, because most of the two motions that we have is they call a brushing motion that touch the walls or a picking motion. In that case, no, it just only go to all the way and smoothly to the apex, just a one or two, three strokes till it reach to the working length. And you can see the amount of the debris, okay, that will be produced. Just go all the way. If you have any stress, just go back, okay, till the release of the dentin uh, clogged inside. Then you will irrigate. You can see now the depth of the irrigation needle. It can go deeper and deeper, okay. Now you can go and use the prime. The prime, which is equal to 2604. It can go all the way, okay to the working length, it's easier. You can see there is no touch from the coronal or the middle, only at the epical preparation. This is what we need, okay, from our rotary system. We don't need much more damage, okay, on the walls. We need it to do the purpose, okay, of cleaning, okay, and shaping, and then with the irrigation that can reach to at least one to two millimeter from the irrigation needle. And we will can see that, okay, from the uh, irrigation needle that can reach to the at least one to two millimeter. You can see the irrigation needed now can reach to at least one to two millimeter from the working length. And that's the purpose. Some of you will say to me, okay, that's maybe dangerous, okay, it can push you outside or as an accident. I'll show you the slide later on, okay, and how this irrigation needed. You might use the endoactivator. If you don't have it, you can use the ultrasonics activator, okay, or whatever system. But this is a good way, okay, if you have the editor, okay, and before the obturation and just remove the smear layer, and after that, you might use it with a sodium hypochlorite to make it the final rinse, then after that, drying and obturation. This system has a fitting matching cone, either for the prime or for the uh, small or the medium. And you can see it's fit well, and it comes at the end. So that's why with the obturation system, you need to cut half to one millimeter before we are going with the warm vertical condensation. Otherwise, it might go over beyond, okay, the obturation or the apex of the teeth. This is the irrigation uh, needle that we are talking about. And this is the, 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 the size, okay, of it. It's like 23 in length and the diameter, it's almost uh, equal to 30 gauge needle. 
the way how it works, okay, it's like a side vent. So it's not really an, an open end, okay? So it's a closed end. So it's two side and it's equal to size 13. This is the summary, okay, of how the system works. So you go with the, uh, the glide path, okay? Then after that, you have the orifice modifier. Then you have to do the recapitulation and the irrigation. Then go in with the glider and you have to shape and this is will complete your glide path. After that, you might go with the prime if the case is looks and finish in that sequence. You might you go and use the endo activator, okay? If you have a smaller file or smaller canal or a larger canals, you might go with a smaller medium. The prime is 2604, the small is 2004. The medium is 3603. Now, if you have a bigger size than 36, like let's say upper palatal or lower distal or a center incisor, this is not the system for these cases. This is only for really difficult cases, calcified canals, curved canals, okay? That's the system you might go for it. And these are the cases that you're really afraid sometimes to go and deal with it. This system is really a nice system. If you went with all the strategies, number one, okay, the axis, number two is the flaring, and number three is the glide path. After that, okay, you can go with any system, whatever you have. If you want a recommendation of a good system, that's a good system with the difficult cases. This is how the package comes. It has the uh, orifice opener, you have the glider, and you have the uh, prime, but the paper points and the matching cone and the uh, irrigation needle. Now, I will end up by only three cases. All of you are doing a good end, but just want you to see how conservative these cases look like. This is a case was referred to with, for, for me for, for me with one of my friend and colleague. He removed the uh, bridge and he stopped and he did the access, but he saw that the measles are a little bit scary, okay, or lidgy. Uh, I appreciate the way how he did the access, okay? It's really very conservative in a way, okay? He preserve the the, uh, the the preparation. So this is what it looked like after I did. So I use it with the, uh, through anatomy, okay? With the uh, mesials, okay? Especially the mesials. I, would, I went with the uh, 2604, okay, in the mesials. Now the distal, no, I used the, the uh, bigger system. I went with the, uh, with the uh, pro taper uh, X4, okay? Because it's a, it, it's, this is what I'm talking about. You cannot use one file for every case, okay? It depends on whatever the situation. If I went with the distal, okay, with a 3603, that's very small for a canal with this size, okay? You need to make a cleaning and shaping and irrigation. You can see the, 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 the uh, axis. I didn't modify a lot. The only flaring or anything, you find it only in the middle and the epical preparation. Another case, okay? This is a case. When you look to the case, then you have the, the mesials and the distal, okay? All are decayed. If you think only making a conservative axis, okay? It doesn't work, okay? You have to remove all the decay before you start. You can see the pulp, okay? And the calcification side. And this is one of the indication that you can see how difficult is sometimes these cases. If you look to the distal canal, it's very narrow, okay? And if the canal on the distal, this way of narrowness, okay, you might expect the measles to be much more difficult. So this case was end up by four canals, two measles and two distals. So I did it fully with the uh, true anatomy, okay? The prime on the measles and the uh, medium on the distals. This is sometimes a good case and it's finishing one visit, okay? So it might save your time, a system that can do all of it. But even though, okay, I can use many other systems in one visit. The last case, okay, it may be interesting case, an upper molar, okay, they want to preserve it. They say it's a strategic tooth. They cannot do an implant for this patient. If you look for it, it's an upper second molar. What you'll find different or unique when the first time I saw the, the x-ray, that I don't know how many roots in that. That's just, usually, okay, we are variation that you might look for is the upper first molar. But to go to the second molar, this is maybe the three, third case. I don't know if it's like prone to the area I'm in. If you look carefully, okay, you'll find two palatal roots, okay, and two buccal roots. So I end up, okay, by doing, okay, the measles, okay, uh, the, the buckles, okay, with the true anatomy and the palatal, okay, I went with the other system. So this is two buccal and two palatal. I want to make this as like a simple clinical uh, introductory K uh, presentation for 
whatever, okay, I hope it's beneficial for some of you. Uh, if it's easy, okay, then it's just a refreshment for some of you. Thank you very much.